Hey everyone, how are y'all doing? Hi everyone, it is good to see you all. Let me make sure I've got everything all set up so that I can see you. Hey everyone, um, if I really have five more minutes, I should get some candy. Ooh, candy, candy's great. Hey PH, hi everyone, how are you all? What are you all doing? It has been, I've missed you. I was away at Gen Con and I, and I, and I didn't see you and I, and I don't know, I don't know what you were all doing while I was gone. There is a voice and also a trooper. Uh, hey, theater nerd. Oh, hand pause. Oh, I did see your hand pause, theater nerd, over in the, the that you're making for the cosplay. How cool is that? It is daddy time. Your paws are so awesome. So while I was away at Gen Con, you were being productive, doing amazing things, which, you know, I, I honor. I think that is great. I know, PH, I, it feels like, it feels like so long since I've seen you. I really wanted to try to stream from Gen Con, but I had such tight spaces in between events that I ended up not being able to. And I was sad I couldn't do a, you know, a, a walk around of the place for you so you could see it uh, from my point of view. But then I was not able to, and I'm very sorry. I did have a good time at Gen Con. I got a free game. Isn't that crazy? I was... Uh, at a demo of Ogre, which I kickstarted, so I own Ogre already, but I was like, I want to go to a demo of it. Uh, uh, <laughs> my paw was indeed super awesome. Um, oh, so I was demoing uh, Ogre, and guess what happened? I was demoing it, it was great, I enjoyed it, and then I mentioned that I had never played Munchkin, and the person who was demoing said, oh, here, and then just gave me a box of Munchkin. So now I, I have uh, Munchkin just for free, I just have it, uh, and that was awesome. So I've, I've never played Munchkin, even though it is super popular, uh, but now I will be able to. In other news, I did not win the $700 million lottery. I, I assume none of you all did either, so we're still all in the same boat together. Um, I know, it is really cool, right? I played a lot of um, RPGs, including a number of ones that I kickstarted. Um, highlight, of course, being uh, Bluebeard's Bride, that was great. Um, see, Jer, sometimes Hamilton will be stuck in your head, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to give in to the Hamilton because there is no, that's it. Like, that's all you've got. It's just all Hamilton all the time. Um, <laughs> oh, sweet, Sal. All right, you know what? You got it. Congrats on you. Um, you know what? Have $700 million. Speaking of the lottery, Yes, that is the Bluebeard's Bride game that Strix worked on, and it was great. I cannot wait to get the Kickstarter. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. I'm just like, ooh, it was so excellent. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? So I played, I, played, um, I played a bunch of stuff. I played Bluebeard's Bride. I played Blue Rose. I played um, a GURPS game, which was really excellent. It was sort of Shakespearean. It was really, really good. Um, I played... Oh, I should turn off Discord because clearly people are going to have these things showing up and we don't need that happening. Let's do this. No Discord. Uh, yeah, $700 million is a lot of money and I don't even really understand it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's because I'm not a rich person, but like, I... <sighs> yeah. People ask me, like, what would you do if you won the lottery? And my answer is usually something like, uh, pay off my student loans, buy some CDs? Maybe a house, like, but maybe a house, but none of that's gonna take even a million dollars, like, at all. Um, so, like, I just don't think I have a good concept of seven hundred million dollars of like what that is. Like, that is something that <laughs> uh, for about. So you know they say, and I they always say that if you win the lottery, you should take the big lump sum because blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so much money, right? But they always say, like, it's better for you to go and take the lump sum. But I think it's probably better for you to take it over, you know, every year. Uh, because they say that people who win the lottery very often end up not having that money after not long of a time period. Yeah, I don't even know. Um, what else did I play? Oh, I played um, Eclipse Phase, the Fate version. So I got to play using the Fate system and Eclipse Phase. And I also played Shadows of Esterin. Uh, those are the RPGs I played. 
uh, and then I played, yeah, lump sum is better if you understand investment, but so many people, yeah, otherwise the annuity is better because so many people end up losing all the money right away uh, and end up not, you know, like end up being bad for them. Um, and I played the Pathfinder adventure card game twice. That was fun. And then, and then I played, uh, although they needed more GMs for the evening event. And then I played the Game of Thrones card game. And I went to two different panels. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, none of us here won the lottery except for Sal, who's now a 700 millionaire uh, and is going to personally fund Geek Space TV. Yeah, this, right, this is, see, everybody, is, everyone here is very, is, uh, <laughs> off the go <laughs> with a current bonus $100 million to abdicate. We'd probably take it. Uh, yeah, so the annuity, right? Take the annuity, that's what I'm going to say. Um, I also have been in, uh, I had, those of you who follow my Twitter, I had plain problems, right? My plane got bumped and so that I had to spend the night in DC and I didn't get home until like a day later that I wanted. And so I've been trying to be really productive since then. Uh, and I have not, it turns out, this is crazy. I have not, I did not, I was not able to watch uh, Critical Role. Uh, no, it's true. It's true. He wouldn't abdicate then. It's exactly, hey, Granny Weasley, thank you for the host. Ooh, why am I not getting sounds? Why am I not getting sounds? Oh, I know why. Uh, thank you, Grinny. I, I had my sound down because it was distracting me. And uh, I wanted to... No, no. Yeah, it's the sounds are there. It's just that I didn't hear them. Um, yeah, no, actually, I think there was a whole problem with the... Like, when I got there, all sorts of planes were having problems. So I think it was some kind of general sort of situation where like basically lots and lots of people had plane problems. Gritty! Hey, how are you? Uh, we're just sort of doing our, our post uh, Gen Con update. So I have to tell you, well, this is super serious. It's not next week, but the week after classes start. And so I have got to finish my syllabi and a bunch of other stuff, and I have to do it in the next couple of days. So that's... So after today, I'm going to go and watch the last episode of Critical Role while doing lots of email. And uh, apparently lots of things happened at Critical Role on Friday, but I don't even know what. I will find out. So I'm like a week behind, but I will get caught up. Uh, you're feeling groggy, Grinny, and icky. Drink ginger ale. And also cranberry juice. And maybe a milkshake. All of those things make me feel better. Uh, if I'm feeling, uh, yes, and also lifesaver gummies. Like these are all things that should be should be shared with everyone. Uh, mayonnaise. Are you feeling groggy? Have uh, uh, oh, I, I have to. So I'm behind. I have to watch Exalted. I'm caught up on Layla the Vampire Slayer. I've got to watch Shield of Tomorrow. I've got to watch uh, Critical Role. Um, yeah, I just feel like I've got all sorts of things. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to waking up, Granny. So definitely have a milkshake then. Let's, uh, let's hang over, let's hang out. Let's go over to our dream dad, shall we? Artie Snack! I'm doing well, how are you? I'm, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff I have to do in life and in work, but you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it today, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. And I'm, I didn't get the con crud. Oh, if your stomach feels off, Granny, ginger ale. Ginger ale, Gatorade, ginger ale. If your stomach's feeling iffy, ginger ale. Um, well then don't have a milkshake, have ginger ale. Ginger ale, that's all. Um, oh, PH, you're going to sleep. Oh, uh, PH, it was so good to see you. And I hope I will, I will see you, you know, in one of the other streams sometime soon. So that will be really good. Go to sleep, PH, get sleep. It's important. I like that our moon now has like sleepy eyes on it. Um, what, oh, I wanted to tell you one, I wanted to tell you all one other thing. So um, I was asked by a friend of mine to maybe run some games for him at Gen Con next year. Yeah, have wonderful dreams, PH. It's like sleep, sleep tight. Don't let the big bugs 
bed bugs bite and sweet dreams too. Um, so a friend of mine asked me to run his game, uh, some sessions of his game next Gen Con, which means I'm going to have to go and run on Roll20 uh, something in his game system so that I can get some practice before Gen Con next year. That's all. But uh, let's uh, let's do some Dream Daddy. It's Rex Manning Day. Oh, I forgot to tell you all. I've got a giveaway today, and it is a code for One Piece Burning Blood, which is another game that I cannot play because it is for PC only. So, One Piece Burning Blood. That is our giveaway for today. And let's, let's, let's continue. <laughs> Don't let the werewolves bite, Hulky. Uh, I don't even know. Let's see. Uh, we are... Gosh, it's been like 80 years since we played last. What are we going to do? Let's load this one. Oh, 2D fighting game. Yeah. Give us a give us a give um, an update and we'll see how it goes. Let's see what happens when... Oh, Tommy Christmas. Welcome in. Oh, uh, Krellen, I have a question for you. It's an important question. It's, uh, it's serious, and it's personal, and I need to ask you. Are you ready? And I'm going to ask you right here on the internet, because that's the best way to ask questions that are personal and serious. Um, Krellen, I noticed that you're on my subscriber list, and I don't remember if I sang you the name game song. Did I? Did you get a name game, Krellen? Because if you didn't get a name game, then you need to get a name game. But I can't remember if I sang you the name game or not. I once tried to say that to my girlfriend, and instead of bite, I said vote. So now we have a running joke about how werewolves are the cause for our current political crisis, and how FDR turned werewolves away from the polls. Okay, see, that's what I thought, Krellen. I saw you up there, and I was like, I don't think that Krellen got a name game. And um, that's not acceptable. First off, I want to thank you for subscribing. That is amazing. But second off, you don't get to subscribe and not get a name game. You're going to get a name game. So, <clears throat> uh, come on, everybody. I said, let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. I treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F. Or an M will appear. And then you say Bo at a B, then you say the name, then banana fan and foe. And then you say the name with a and then you say the name again with an F very plain, then a fee, fi and a mo. And then you say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, mm, mm. Krellen, 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 Bobellin, Banana Fana, Fofelin, Fee, Fi, Momelin. Krellen! Woo! Uh, welcome in as a subscriber, as a graduate corporal, and thank you so much for the subscription, and I hope you liked your name game. I'm so exciting. No, 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 Sal. Sal, if you sub, you're gonna get a name game, because people deserve, right? <laughs> Krellin, Krellin, Bobellin, Banana, Fana, Fulfellin, Fifa, Momelin, Krellin. Ooh, all the name games. Sal will also have to get a name game. Anybody who subs gets a name game. Because who doesn't want a name game? It's the best ever. Thank you for the sub, Krellen, and I hope you liked your name game because I like the name game. Like, that's really, I just, that's all I want in life is just to be able to do lots of name games because I love the name game. And maybe one of these days, somebody will subscribe. It, it's, you're, you're a Los Angeles class. Nice. But I'm still going to have to go and give you a name game. If that happens, just note it. Um, I just want—I just want you to know that one of these days, someone is going to subscribe whose first, who the first letter of whose name is either a B or an F or an M, and then we can sing the add-on part to the song, which is, if the first two letters are ever the same, you drop them both, then say the name like Bob. Bob drop the B's, Bo Ab or Fred. Fred, drop the F's, Fo Red, or Mary, Mary, drop the M's, Mo Airy. That's the only name that is contrary. Mm, 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 mm. So, uh, that's, so just so you know, one of these days, it's gonna happen. Uh, so, uh, yes, subscriber excitement. Woo! But 
I, I know, I saw you, Krellin. So I, I thank you so much, and I hope you liked your name game. So let's find out what's happening over on Rhett's Manning Day. So exciting. So, uh, we had a date with, um, with Coffee Dad, and it is our next day after our date with Coffee Dad. Uh, and that is where we're at so far. Um, and remember, for those of you who don't know, although I imagine you all do, this is our, our playthrough is Rex Manning, who is British, and he was in a ska punk band in the 80s, and he's super cool, although uh, also sort of awkward. And we so far have had one date, and that is with um, our coffee shop dad. And how are we doing with our chat, is my question. How's chat? I want to make sure that chat is still working. Because sometimes it doesn't work, you know? And then it's sad. I just want to see. Because I'm not seeing you all chatting, which makes me feel like maybe something suspicious is happening. Uh, I will go to... Oh, good! Okay, good. Chat's here. Whew! Okay. I think what happened was that I sang the name game and I murdered you all. Okay, good. Everybody's testing. Good, I'm seeing you all. I was worried for a moment. I was worried that, you know, I tell I tell you all about the name game, and then uh, and then everybody's like, that's it, we have to leave. Too much name game. Uh, <laughs> but I know you love the name game. Eating cookies. Ooh, Ice Bunny, I want cookies. Ice Bunny, I want cookies. Conveniently, I have cookies, so that's okay. But, mm. uh, So let's see. Rex Manning. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. Oh no! Grinny Weasley. Ginger ale. No tummy tummy demons. Don't do it. Uh, oh, oh! I don't know if I told you all this, did I? I don't think I told you. Um, I got it set up so that the, the, the quotes are now jumbled. So if you type learned again, you should get a second, a different one because I've got it all, I used the new setup. So you should be able to get multiple learns. Learn, right, boom, boom, right? How is that for exciting? I went and I did online research and I found out how to use multiple quotes, right? It's just a small pool, but we have them. And, uh, well, it's not all you, Krellin, you are just, a person who gives us really good things to learn, though, every week. So there's not a... Uh... Oh. <laughs> there, see, there's an ice bunny. We, we learned about David Hasselhoff. Um, exactly. So remember, anybody who... Um, and I have, I have an envelope, right, and a pen. So if we have any good things that we learned this week, you just have to let me know. And I will always make sure I write them down so that I can add them later. Mm-hmm. So good, so good. I just, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited about our lives here in the academic foxhole. So excellent. Uh, so let's see. Um, what do we have? The nice male person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. It's uh, Rex, he likes coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. The Hoff lesson, right? I love the Hoff. I should share my picture of my friend creative of me for my birth. Oh, if there's a picture that somebody created for you for your birthday that involves the Hoff, then we should all definitely see it in the foxhole. I, I feel like that is a mandatory thing. Statistics and note taking are magic. No, seriously, they're magic. We should burn all the witches perform such <laughs> sorcery at the stake. I feel like that might be a thing that we need to learn. Uh, and, oh, I can actually just say it out loud onto my phone and it's faster than me writing it down, sort of. Um, notes, notes, new notes, boom, here we go. Statistics and note-taking are magic, period. No, seriously, period. They're magic, period. We should burn all the witches who perform such foul sorcery at the stake, period. Sal, 2017. Done. Uh, 
She took a picture of me kissing Snoopy on the nose and turned it into one of me kissing Hop in a mankini and a leather jacket. Well, that makes sense. And also, who wouldn't want that photo? I think everyone wants that photo. Everyone wants that photo. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. So, large yellow envelope? That sounds like a college acceptance letter. Hmm? Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. <laughs> Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Ooh, look at her room. Her room is cool. This is the first time we've been in her room. That's awesome. She's got a lava lamp. What? She's got a lava lamp? I, I, I like it. I like it. Horn Institute for the Arts. I know. I'm saying acceptance. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. We got this. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. I know. She's going to go to college. She's going to be so good. It was my Facebook profile picture for a while. Now I've had pictures this really awesome minimalistic picture of my face. All that sounds really good, Granny. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Look at her like sassy face. Huh. And my Facebook profile picture is me in my wife's purple kitty headphones. That's awesome. I don't know what my profile Facebook picture is of me. Hmm, I don't know. Probably something generic and not exciting. The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't... I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student, you nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad. Oh. I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had a heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. All right. Thanks, Dad. Now I feel all warm and fuzzy. She's going to go to her dream school. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Huh. Wherever? Amanda and I walk on the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Okay, first off... Sal would agree with me here, I think, and probably everyone would agree with me, that Amanda has to be the coolest because her best idea of dinner is a burrito, which is the best dinner ever. Boom. Burrito. We win the game. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. I know. Food truck burritos are the best burritos. Tommy Christmas knows it. Uh, right? I just feel all warm and fuzzy. Like, we just, like, mm, warm and fuzzy. Just give me a Rita with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit in a patch of grass and watch the ship sail lazily through the bay. Okay, time out for a moment. How cool is this game? What I think is so great is this game is theoretically a, a daddy dating simulator, which it is, right? It's a daddy dating simulator. Oh, food truck readers on the West Coast. Tommy Christmas, you're making me jealous that I'm not back on the West Coast anymore. Hmm. Ugh. Food truck burritos. Um, but I think that even, what I think is great about this game is even though it's theoretically a, a daddy dating simulator, it's really about this wonderful relationship you have with your daughter. And that is so great. Like, how many times do we get that in games? I haven't yet played Last of Us. I will. I haven't yet played it, but I will. So anyway, I just think that's really great. Uh... Oh, yeah. Grinny, 
if you lived in the Boston area, I would get you a ginger ale. Unfortunately, you do not live in the Boston area, so I cannot get you a ginger ale. But if you did, I would. I would I would get you a ginger ale so hard so that because I have a vending machine right outside and I would get you a ginger ale and I would transport it to you somehow through magic. Wait, my Facebook profile picture is just your face being held in an approximately 45 degree angle with a purple collared shirt, white undershirt underneath, and a TV or computer similar monitor behind you that's washed out and impossible to tell what's on it. No, Sal, that can't be me then. Um, <laughs> nice. That can't be me. Like, I don't think that's me. Because I post way more earlier than 2012. Let me see what's on my Facebook. Facebook. I was Siget, not human. All right, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what it is. That's not a purple shirt. It's a uh, blue. That's a blue shirt. Boom. But no, I posted, like, I posted, like, I posted Monday. Right? Just like, I just posted recently. Oh, I suppose most of my posts are not open. I suppose that's what it is. Why are my posts from 2012 open? Hmm, right? Questionable. But yes, blue. It's a blue shirt. Um, <laughs> you know what? Whatever. Sal's not creepy. I, I refute it. I refute the creepiness. Um, also, Sigint. That's all. Um, Amanda and I sit in a patch of grass and watch ships lazily sail through the bay. Yeah, probably just the open posts. I think most of my posts are not open. Yeah. But I should like, and I know I should like look through all of my old posts, but I just don't have the energy or the time. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> and the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free? <laughs> Sal is creepy. He knows this. You know, Sal, I do realize that... Okay, here's the thing I have to say about your alleged creepiness. So the sort of drawing you have of yourself or when you go and do your um, stream announcements, uh, which is you in the hoodie, and... Uh, Yes, so he was able to find me because he knows my real name and workplace. But again, I try to keep this life and that life separate. Um, so anyway, the hood you have, Sal, is yellow. And yellow doesn't read creepy. It would have to be, like, black and, like, more dramatic lighting for it to be super, super creepy. Yellow just seems sort of friendly, just noting it. Um, oh, I'm sorry that you cannot take a bath. That's a bummer. I'm sorry. Hmm... Um, ginger ale. Grinny. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do the in, in, in between bites of a burrito. I, I thought I told her to chew with her mouth closed. Um, if you knew the character that drawing was based on. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Maybe yellow is not a friendly color? If it makes you feel better or worse, that's not actually me. That's the Shadowrun character. I don't wear glasses, for instance, nor do I have neck tattoos. But you could put on fake neck tattoos and fake glasses. I mean, it's possible. These are all possibilities. Um, ooh. Hey. I don't know if you can hear it, but students are already arriving in the dorm where I live. I just heard them in the hallway. Mm. Um, I wonder who my roommate's going to be. You take a survey online, and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. I bet we're going to be best friends. Craig and Iowa, a good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Only Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about a new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Huh. Call ruled. All right. Ooh, they let you have animals in dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit, though? Um, wait, wait, what happened? 
No, Nightbot! Nightbot, don't kill Sal old style! Don't do that, Nightbot! No! Uh, I'm not sad. I'm sad, but not sad because I have a very nice tattoo. Oh! Oh! Do you have a tattoo? Nice, Grinny! I need a new tattoo. Like, I have some tattoos, but I don't have a tenure tattoo, so I need a new tattoo. That's what I need. Also, Nightbot, don't murder anyone. Oh boy, I'll, I think I'll leave all of that up to you. She's so excited, I, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Aww. Ooh, Jer has got all sorts of, like, knowledge of the Nightbot. I'll have to go and, you know what I'm going to have to do clearly? Uh, ooh, Biomech. Hmm. I'm going to have to see what's going on with, uh, with users and caps and whatnot, because I have to make sure that regulars can do that, and then, and then Jer can write. So we're going to get it. Um, yeah, expensive. Hmm. Uh, I got it on the 14th. Oh, but soon. I need a new tattoo. Grinny, you're inspiring me. I want to, I have to think about it. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I don't want to put it down from the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. She seems to got senioritis. I pat her on the back. I am as of yet uninked. That's okay. You can be inked or not inked. Um, I have three slash four tattoos. Three tattoos. Four tattoos, but three tattoos. There are two here, but you can only see one because one can rip the other. So that's basically one. Then one in my rib cage, and then one in my forearm. And I need a new tattoo. But, like, this, like, makes a nice, like, symmetry. Like, here, here, here. It works. So I need now one... I feel like I need one that's on... I think I could probably do here. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe. Um. <laughs> yeah, a tenure tattoo would be like a big tattoo on my face. Um. <laughs> um, I would love that. No, I just... Uh, no, I'd like to... I have a tattoo for like each major life. Oh yeah, by the way... Uh, side note for anyone who's interesting, having a tattoo in your ribcage really hurts. It hurts a lot. Just, just in case you wanted to know. Um, um, does it hurt to get a tattoo? Sort of depends. Uh, the, the tattoo on the head didn't hurt. That tattoo on the forearm didn't hurt. The tattoo in the ribcage hurt a lot. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> tattoos feel like unicorn kisses. <laughs> Just like unicorn kisses. That's exactly right. I mean, it depends on where you're getting the tattoo, right? That's that's what I would say. Um, also, uh, if you're getting a tattoo, like breathe through it. Like if it starts if it starts being painful, you just have to breathe through it and wait for the endorphins to come, and then you'll be fine. Um, um there's just a lot of nerve. Like, see, okay, here's the thing. Your head, the bone's right there, but there are not a, not a lot of nerve endings on your head, so, like, it doesn't actually hurt very much. There's a lot going on right here in your rib cage, so, wah. Uh, I, I will tell you, Gritty, I think it depends on where you get it. Like, rib cage hurt, like, like a beast. Head, not really at all. And then, like, the forearm was, like, fine. Yeah, so anyway, like, when you get it, you just have to breathe through it. Wait for it. Wait for the endorphins to come, and then you'll be fine. Unless it's your rib cage, in which case, you know, that was a thing. But I have a tattoo for every sort of major life location. Like I had an army tattoo, uh, Germany tattoo, undergraduate tattoo, grad school tattoo. So now I need like a professor tattoo. Ooh. Oh. I feel like the inside of your angle might be painful. Right, that sounds like a painful place. I would imagine. I, I don't know, though. I can't say. And also what kind of tattoo you're getting. A lot of shading, like what's going on with there. Ooh, 
Somebody's watching me And I have no privacy Whoa, I always feel that Somebody's watching me Tell me, is it just a dream? Um, Arkansas, 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 wait, Arkan, wait, okay, wait, that's not Arkansas, it's Arkanaskay Turtle. Arkanaskay Turtle, welcome into the Academic Foxhole. Hi, I'm Trooper SJP, this is the Academic Foxhole. We have all of the amazing, wonderful uh, battle buddies hanging out here. So, well, see, I don't, see, I thought it was Arkansas Gay Turtle, but then it's like Arkanaskay Turtle, I think is actually how it's written. So welcome in and uh, welcome in, hang out with us. We, we have a giveaway that's going to happen, I don't know, at 8 or 7.30, something like that. It's going to be good. It's going to be a fighting game. Welcome in. Um, I, ooh. Somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. Whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Phantom Lover 12, welcome into the Acrobic Foxhole. Uh, we, all the, oh, oh. I said, let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name, you treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F or an M will appear. And then I say Bo at a B, then I say the name, then banana, fana, and fo. And then I say the name again with an F very plain, and a fee, fi, and a mo. And then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Crit witch, crit witch, crit witch, bo bit witch, banana, fana, fo, fit witch, fi, fi, mo, mit witch. Crit Witch, e! thank you Crit Witch for the subscription, that's amazing, and I hope you enjoyed your name game. That is the best thing ever. It's a resub, but I don't care. Any excuse to sing the name game is just gonna go and ha make me very, very happy. Uh, thank you for the resub, Crit Witch. That's the best thing ever. All the confetti, all the time, e! Oh, and if you are, um, in my warming glow, if you are a subscriber, you get to use our exciting subscriber emote, which uh, is the best thing ever. It is our, uh, it is our, are we getting, are we getting, Grinny, are you getting, are you hitting us with too many caps or too many symbols? Could be that. Um, but it's, uh, where, where are we? Where are we? Uh, <laughs> Watch out for too many emotes. Uh, or add Grinny Weasley, it'll be fine. Oh, uh, oh, Night. Why is Nightbot so sassy? That's what I want to know. Um, oh, I'm so glad it made you smile, Crit Witch. I want to make people smile. That makes me happy. Uh, I was just going to tell you something, Crit Witch. I know I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. No. So our, our wonderful emote, it's our, it's our thoughtful pipe. And it was made by Jer, who made our uh, subscriber emote. And so I want to thank Jer for that because it's amazing. And a uh, sassbot, sassbot. And so now we have our like exciting, so you can be thoughtful. Mm. And if uh, all of you new folks, you can always go and type learned as a command and find out what we've learned. Because we've learned, we learned all sorts of strange and interesting things, all of which are true here at the Academic Voxel. All of this is true. Uh, I know, right? I know, I've got like, I've got like space for lots of emotes, but apparently not that many emotes. Um, but we're gonna whoop whoop, share. Share's the best, share's the best. So anyway, welcome in. We're playing Dream Daddy right now, and we're playing as Rex Manning, a uh, former ska punk British dude who is now having a great relationship with his daughter and trying to date daddies. And we've uh, went, ooh, and we have a Discord. Oh, thanks, Sal. We have a Discord. You should come to our Discord. We just nerded up there, like hardcore all the time. Mostly about tabletop role-playing games, video games, Life in general? It's like a good, oh, regular already exists. So maybe you're already in there, Grinny. I don't know. We'll check it out. Licorice pipes. Pipes, licorice pipes. Um, think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays. There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. 
And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. We have just like the best. Um, wait, wait, what happened? Did we get too many? Did we get too many caps again? Too many caps. Uh, stop spamming. I have like a, I have like 30. They're not, okay. So let me write this down. Let me protect regs from caps and emotes. I will do that as soon as we get off of the stream today. I will protect regulars from those two things. Caps and emotes. It's on my to-do list. Boom. You can't read my handwriting. I can't either. So it's, ooh, should I be writing on this? It's fine. Um, <laughs> but we will fix it. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I, I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. Now I want a burrito. I pull Amanda in for a big hug and kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. <laughs> Love you, too, pops. Like, I feel like Amanda's the best. Welcome. Oh. You've got dads. Oh. We have to go on a dad date. Oh my gosh. Sad tasting burritos are the worst. They're the worst. Okay, folks, it's like dad date time. <laughs> Tears don't make burritos taste sad. Uh, just soggy. That's a new thing we've learned. I'm going to write it down. Tears. See? Crumlin is just too quotable. Tears don't make burritos taste sad. Just soggy. And that's from Crumlin. Um, 2017. Um, is it a bad to read handwriting? You know, um, you've got dads. I don't know. Maybe it's because we write so much. I just, I don't. I don't know. I think I've had bad handwriting even before I was an academic. Um, I mean, I can do it, but I just write so fast because I'm thinking so fast that I'm writing so fast. And then I just like write, 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 write. And then I write things that no one can read, including myself. I, you know. So we've been out on a date with Matt. Should we go on a date with Hugo? I Should we go on a second date with Matt? Should we go on a date with Damien, who's super goth? We're not going out on a date with Mugger Dad. There's uh, Bear Dad, who's like super competitive about their daughters, which I, I don't, I don't need it. Uh, there's like Keanu Dad, who's awesome, but like is like my best buddy, and like I don't know how much we have in common. Uh, okay, we're gonna, uh, and then there's uh, Book Dad, and there's Children of the Corn Dad. Uh, so we're gonna go and have on a date. We're gonna have a date with Damien. We're gonna just go on a date with Damien. Uh, Damien Bloodmarch. Oh, how do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise or black cats, please send me a letter. On a Friday night, you are most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. That's a little creepy. It's a little creepy. If you had one time to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. Also creepy. What are your turn-ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. Bosom. Bosom. What did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. What is your favorite movie genre? Foreign art house horror. What is your ideal date? It's night. We are at, at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. Uh, what do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. I spend a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. Uh, so we're, we're gonna go out on a date with Damien Bloodmarch? Is that, is that, that's gonna happen apparently. I don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. Dad tip 79. Also true. This is true. Tip 56, go ask your mother. 
Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. Okay, we're, we're apparently going to go out on a date with Damien, folks. We're going out with our goth. I navigate to Damien's downbook page and type out a message. Hey, dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. Uh, oh, that's good. I mean, it de like, I think it depends on what, like, a sketchy gas station or, like, a nice gas station. I sit there for a minute before I see Damien's typing. Um, industrial dark wave clubs in Berlin end in blades stor storming in far too often. I know, but I feel like they're super cool, right? But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee, and the computer finally dings. Rex, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter, for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Whoa, there's more. Hey, Starletter, how are you doing? We're going on a date with Damien, the goth dad. <laughs> you want to dance in a shower of blood. I feel like that would get all of your clothes super messy, Grinny. I'm just saying. Like, it would get your clothes super stained, and I think it's hard to get blood out of clothing, or so I've been told. That's what I'm saying. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you, till then, adieu. Yours humble, D. Bloodmarch. Uh, Starletter, you're awesome. <laughs> Arrangements can be made, Blenny, Grinny, but you'll need a shower of water soon thereafter. <laughs> Again, we have the best people, the best people in the academic foxhole. That's all. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hmm. Hey, Amanda. That's where you. That's why you wear black tripper hides the bloodstains. That's fair. Now I know. Starletter, how are you doing? How's it been? I, I haven't seen everybody since I was away last week for Gen Con, and, and I missed you all, so tell me, how did it go? Like, how has it been? That's what I want to know. Um, hey Amanda, can you help me with something? Aww. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your black pimples. Yeah, don't ask your daughter to do that. Come on, Rex. Not, not... Oh, no, no, no. Can you... Can you interpret this for me? Huh. I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just... I don't understand net speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Ah. Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and LMO, or whatever, and decided that what they really needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So, so what do I do? Hmm. Where's your pen and quill? What? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill, Dad? How we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. <laughs> Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. <laughs> or our dowry. <laughs> or... So, you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things like you know about it back to me, aren't you? Ah. Like, the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. <laughs> Amanda, work harder. Great, so what do I say to Damien? Yeah. I don't know, Rex, if you need to get your daughter giving you all this advice for dating. I got this. Amanda reaches over and types, uh, over me and types on the keyboard. I know, Amanda's so great. <laughs> sure thing, yes. dude. Regards, Rex. Amanda hits sin and smiles at me. <laughs> well... I suppose that's that. Uh, oh. Ooh. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. More of a manor? A state? The Gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. How does he get a Gothic manor in the middle of this sort of like random suburban cul-de-sac? I don't even know. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it uh, against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's 
It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits for who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Remodeling. Oh, this is kind of... As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Uh, I will note that this is a very nice spread. You've got some people on the walls, including a dog. Uh, we have, like, fossilized skulls, which is actually not creepy because they look all reptilian and ancient. You've got a very nice sort of clock in there. Roses. You've got some very nice uh, canapes, pedophores, uh, hors d'oeuvres, food things. Looks good to me. Uh, hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner of the room flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? You're right, Sal. I should have mentioned the cake right away because uh, that cake looks pretty good. Um, that's all. <laughs> way too long. Way too long for cake. Rex, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. Ooh. What's, uh, what, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh. oh, sorry, there was a draft. Uh, and the door creaking open when I, when I knocked? <laughs> Damien's gonna murder us now and the game will be over, we'll be dead. Oh. Uh, I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? Oh. I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right. This is not like the best oh. opening. Please let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. Oh! This is one of the older homes in the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Mm. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. Huh? We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Son. Uh, did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's, uh, my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There is more to see. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that is not the Bluebeard's door that will then involve murder, uh, that Damien opens with a flourish. Oh. And this is the library. Uh, Grinny has been distracted. Distracted by the murder? I'm curious. Uh, he also collects butterflies, clearly. Has heavy curtains for the windows. A lot of books. Including, like, this is like a double-decker library, and I want one. I know. I want this library. Sunlight streams from the floor-to-ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Damien hurts artwork. Uh, Discord? Oh! You've been distracted by Discord. That's fair. It is fine. Let's see. Look out the window. Look at the butterflies. Pick up a book. That's enough for the tour. Clearly, we pick up a book, right? Oh, that would be a great place to game in. A great place to game in. Um, had to sip out for a bit. Things have been really good. I finished Undertale. Now I'm playing some Dead Space. Oh, nice. Uh, this was your second playthrough of Dead Tale. Undertale. Undertale. I put Dead Space and Undertale together and I got a Dead Tale, which is like, um, Dead Tale is a, um, uh, an animated feature uh, uh, about Five of the Undead Mouse zombie who is looking for brains. The Dead Tale. It's a. Uh, it's good. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's pick up a book. Hmm. You know, Rex. In the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much distraction from work and school. Dead tail, right? So we're gonna have to. <laughs> Hi, grandson. We're gonna have to totally. <laughs> Hail, grandpa. Uh, I like that we have familiar relations here. That makes me happy. Um, Dead tail. It's gonna be the new. It's gonna be a new game. 
Um, zombie DuckTales, which I think is also fine. I think we can do that. I think we have a lot of options for uh, undead zombie cartoons for children. Um, that's, that's fine. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read uh. aloud. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smiled, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Oh my! Oh, okay, I, I, I think that's enough. <laughs> Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. Mm. Oh, uh, that's a, uh, a rare book for my private collection. Apparently. Apparently. It could be a potential Oscar winner, but the question star letter is, would it win for writing, directing, and acting? Or would it win for, like, special effects? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Suicide Squad, also an Oscar winner. <laughs> Naruto Smut fanfics. That's that's what we need. That's what we need. Uh, let's look at the butterflies. Um, Sasuke. Sasuke. Oh, thank you, Sal. Sasuke. Sasuke. Thank you. Sasuke. Anytime, anytime, add to it. Anytime. Um, yes. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Hmm. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Damien is super closet nerd. Super closet nerd. This is true. Oh. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is is that a thing? Hmm. No. Uh, uh, well, let's look out the window. I walk to the window, and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups. With his daughters on his back. Damn. I, yeah, I don't know if he actually is. He seems pretty out about his nerdness. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Yeah, no, I think Krillin is right. He does wear a cape, so, you know. Damn. Hmm. Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out the full-length windows? Um, I... I feel like those statistics are questionable. And I think that we had a quote about statistics just earlier. Wait, really? Oh. No. Uh, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Uh, <laughs> closets? Closets? They're full of your clothes. Oh, maybe sometimes dead bodies. This happens. Please, will you join me for tea? I follow Damien to a sitting room where finger foods have already been set upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat in one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. <laughs> Damien smiles to himself. Krellen, he's a closet nerd. You were totally looking at somebody to read a fanfic and he tried to close it in shame. Hmm, closet otaku. Hmm, hmm. Even nerds are ashamed, ashamed of smut. I suppose it depends on the kind of nerd, right? I suppose it depends on the kind of nerd. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of the day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they are served. <laughs> Grinny is not ashamed of smut, which I totally... Uh, is ashamed of not have... Oh. All, see, all of the troubles. Not having enough smut, shameful. Too much smut, shameful. Not the right kind of smut. Here's a thing. I thought we should maybe talk about this. Smut backwards is Tums, which is an antacid tablet which comes in flavors. Does that mean something? Is it meaningful? I don't know. I don't know. We should think about it. <laughs> I'm going to make bad life choices. Um, Starlight <laughs> Smut himself. I think everybody's Tums. That's what I think. Everybody's Tums. Oh. Oh. My dear friend, we are currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's... Informative. <laughs> Tumblr's a good place for smut. Smut is so spicy, you need Tums afterwards. That's probably what it is. First you have the smut, and then you have the Tums. Mm. <laughs> make good life choices. Don't make bad life choices. 
Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Um, your home is really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? I like your cape. I go to Deviant Art for my smut. Life choices. Life choices. The one and only time I've taken Tums, I projectile vomited two sex. Oh. Um, Grinny, do you think it was the Tums that made you projectile vomit, or do you think it was whatever it was that you ate that caused you to have the Tums in the first place? These are questions that I have. So, gang, I need your help. Your home is really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay, or I like your cape? Which one? Which one should we? Which one should we go to? I think everybody goes to, like, I feel like porn websites are are definitely a thing. Um, so, folks, cape. Cape? Tommy Christmas says cape. It is a nice cape, and we were talking about it earlier. We're going with the cape. Oh. It's a cloak, actually, but thank you. Victorian fashion is very important to me. Cake! Cake! Flatter will get you everywhere. Um, I'm making battle choices in the fact that I'm drawing a bath, even though I shouldn't. Um, this is interesting. Granny, can you take a bath while not submerging your tattoo? Depending on where your tattoo is. Like, maybe you could, if your tattoo's on your arm, you just, you know. Yeah, also, it's not a cloak, right? Like, that is clearly not a cloak. It's way too short to be a cloak. So he is wrong. Um, yes, right? <laughs> and also, yeah, I'm just saying. You, you pull it off quite well. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Oh. Regardless of my historical leanings, it is very important to me to present myself well. It has taken a long time to come up with a style that is both true to form and representative of myself, but I'm very happy with how I dress. Also no hood. Yeah. It's on your arm. Uh, so yeah, you just take your just take your bath like that. Just like have your arm up the whole entire time you're in the bath. Just like that. Uh not a cape. He's worse than a closet nerd. He's a fake nerd. Oh no, he's a furred. Um, no arm in the, no arm. I do get some strange looks, yes, but it's something that brings me a great deal of joy, so I don't mind. To be able to wake up in the morning, pick from my closet a variety of cloaks, waistcoats, waistcoats, top hats, and even binders that are period appropriate feels amazing. Wrap your arm in saran wrap. Saran wrap it up. Saran wrap it up. You wear top hats. Huh. Hmm. You don't? I'm a ska punk. Uh, what got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Hmm. Sorry? <laughs> no, did, did you guys see a marching band? Your bath is not... All right, but hmm. Granny, take care of your tattoo. I, I'm afraid I don't... Just, sorry, wrong, wrong voice. I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Hmm. Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? Oh. I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> hmm. Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into a sort of an obsession. It is a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Ugh, I hate you, Rex Manning. Oh, don't hate Rex Manning. Grinny just wants to sedate, um, Mugger Dad. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. Good for you, Damien. Good for you for recognizing that, like, the Victorian period was, like, not so great for a lot of people. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws, and love it all the same. Uh, very nice, Damien. Nice. Mm. Tell me, Rex. The... <laughs> <laughs> that joke was terrible, and I do want you to date Rad Bad Dad. Mugger Dad? I just don't think Rex would date Mugger Dad. Hey, tell me, Rex, do you have any hobbies? Oh, man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way that you care about this stuff. Uh. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. You're sick an interest, right? 
Hearing someone talk about the things that they're passionate about is intriguing and, quite honestly, rather attractive. Oh. Uh -huh. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Oh, quick! Um, sound sophisticated. Oh, that's gonna be hard for that's gonna be hard for Rex. I like watching soap making videos on the internet. I love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Oh, I think we have to go with word jumbles. I think that's what we have to do. Word jumbles, right? I think that's because soap making videos on the internet. I mean, he might like that. We could do soap making or word jumbles. I feel like learning how to juggle once is not, yeah, yeah. I feel like learning how to juggle once is not like a passion. I think that that's not good ones. Um, we're gonna go with some word jumbles. The, uh, uh, I know, they don't, they don't sound like a perfect match. Although soap making does sound very Victorian, that is true. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. Oh, I got the delay. The delay. Mm. It's poetic, really. Mm. Oh, so you're a writer. In a sense, we finish up tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around to the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path waves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. That is amazing. What a gorgeous Victorian garden he's got, right? However, I just want all the dads to get their time in the sun. That's a really gorgeous uh, garden. Oh. My garden. It's, it's beautiful. Uh. Thank you. Uh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. Ah. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Hmm. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, and even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Um, dead bodies make good plant food! Uh, okay, not nah, that... Okay, Grinny, you've given us a new thing that we've learned today. Uh, you know why... Grinny, you've just given us a new thing. Uh, those gardens flourish? Dead bodies make four good plant Food. Grinny. Grinny Weasley. 2017. Boom. <laughs> I'm sorry that you've got an earworm, Sal. Those are the worst. Hmm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off the vine. Off of the oh. vine. Lilium bulbiferum. The orange lily. What do you think this one means? Oh, Orange Lily, my loins are ablaze, thou art the tightest, three cheers for sweet revenge. Oh, um, hmm, hmm, what does the Orange Lily say? Uh, I think maybe three cheers for sweet revenge? I know, right? It's tricky because... I think it actually might be Thou Art the Tightest, it, because if you think the lily is often, white lilies, you do that for like funerals maybe, but I don't know, it also feels like so many My Chemical Romance jokes, so many My Chemical Romance jokes. Uh, tightest? Tightest? Thou Art the Tightest? Uh, I don't know if a lily is a revenge flower. Let's, let's go with Thou Art the Tightest. We're, we're gonna do it. Oh! We got... We just got, um... Eggplants. Lots of eggplants, everybody. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I feel like... 
I feel like that we should have. I should have. We should have. I should have not have second guessed myself. Should have gone with the revenge. Well, <laughs> and that's precisely why floral arrangements is so challenging. All oh, the eggplant. What's your favorite type of flower? All of the eggplant. Oh, ah, uh, what is my favorite type of flower? But remember, this is the favorite type of flower of Rex Manning. Uh, what is Rex Manning's favorite type of flower? Um, yeah, yeah, I think the eggplants are good, right? Um, hmm. So, tulips, tulips. Um, so we've got snapdragons, honeysuckle, and sunflowers. But we're looking for Rex Rex Manning, sort of awkward, ex ska punk. What would he go with? Yeah, snapdragons does sound like a punk band name, doesn't it? I think we'll do that. I like it. Because they're cute, and they can do, and they, and you can do that thing where you squeeze them off, so it looks like they're talking. Snapdragon. What a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh. He, he would put together a bouquet for me. No one's ever given me a bouquet before. He is charming. <clears throat> Damien is charming. I follow Damien down a footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Mm. Oh, Rex, will you excuse me? I must take this. Oh, honeysuckle. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Uh, go, go for it. Hmm. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. A, a bouquet of snapdragons. It, it could be exciting. This makes me wish I'd put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no! I knocked over the gargoyle! Rex! Rex. Fix that guard! Oh, we have to fix the gargoyle. Okay, uh, I have a minute. Oh, gosh. Okay, um, this one? Right, okay. Boom. And then... Fix the gargoyle. What? That's totally how you fix it. Oh, come on. I think it's upside down. But how do I turn it upside down? There we go. Goal. Boo! It's... I... It was upside down. I got it. Um... So I, I got the... I got it? It's not a guard, it's a grotesque. I... Whew! That was a close one. So by the way, I did one date so far, and um, I immediately failed the, the mini game before it even started. It was crazy. So... That's good. Who that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ah! Rex, my sincere apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. Oh, no problem, dude. E everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Hmm. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh... It's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school, post haste. Do you need help? Hmm. Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Huh. You're, you're right. This is one of Lucien's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. I 100% failed the minigame for Brian. Oh. I, like, there are mini-games in this one. Let's go. I mean, you named him Lucy. I know, right? Speaking of which, uh, hmm. this is inspired by Grinny. Um, if any of you have not seen the film The Bad Seed from the 1950s, 
you should see it. Um, oh, there's Rabbit. Like, I could theoretically host a film night and we could watch The Bad Seed, which is about a murderous, cute blonde girl who murders people. It's, it's good. It's, I mean, classic B-horror film. Mm -hmm. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious-looking Hugo. Eh. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. I remember we had the, we had our sort of like, this is our voice for Hugo. Mm. I wouldn't miss it for the world, my dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to that my kids are in trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this time? Oh. Miss Damien, you've got to see to believe. Damien and I formed a step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into the darkness. I know, Hugo probably does hang out in Damien's library. They're all probably really good friends. Watch your step! I can hear, I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement. They don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. Oh. Oh. Our two angry kids. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucien and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucien has a bloody nose. Mm. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Huh. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucien tried to kill me. What? The room falls... Uh, sorry. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you to see what happened. Casco Montiato, my friends. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. A cask of Amontillado. A cask of Amontillado. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Lucian, did you try to... A cask of Amontillado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming or denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him. What's, uh... What's cask of Amontillado? Rex, what did you do in high school? What did you read in high school? Come on now. It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, and then buries him alive behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucien, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I'd lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. Sweet Manchego. It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the Casco Montiato, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucien was leading you to an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages, then read a review of the movie. Sweet Manchego! It's only five pages long, and there is no movie! Ha ha! You're right. I paid Lucien to read it for me. Uh. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this is me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Hmm. I know, right? All right, I'm filing this under. What the hell? Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucien high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. I know. I, I'm not actually quite certain how you spend two weeks in the Casper Montiato, uh, in high school. It's not, you know, it's not that long of a story. You know, but maybe, maybe they're trying to, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's like a whole, uh, maybe they're trying to bring in a lot of cultural and historical context. Uh, mm, mm. Hugo, I'll cover your class. 
Take your son home, Mr. Blood March. You too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in intense silence. Yeah, the boys do seem kind of dumb, right? They do. <laughs> Grinny, you make me laugh. You make me laugh, Grinny. And this is all what I'm going to tell you. All right, so this is what I'm, I have to tell you something. This is important. We're going to give away our code for One Piece Blood Punch. One Piece Blood... One Piece Burning Blood, which is a 2D... Um, also, I, I want Rex to be less dumb. I really do. But sometimes he seems kind of dumb. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's rough. It's rough times. Rough times. One Piece Burning Blood, which is a 2D fighting game. And uh, I'm going to give it away uh, in five minutes. So just make sure that you have said something in the chat within the next five minutes so that you will be on the list for the One Piece Blood Punch Man. One, two piece. Maybe you want a two piece blood punch. Maybe you want like, uh, maybe you want one of those old tummy kind of bathing suits that are like one pieces and they're like super long. You know what I mean? Like the sleeves, like in the, the like they look like onesies. Maybe we want a onesie blood punch man. Maybe we want uh, burning blood onesies. I don't know. Uh, I feel like a burning burning blood onesie has not... Oh, the Casco Amontillado is good. That's a good one. I would. I recommend it. I recommend it. Also, I recommend burning blood onesies. Um, uh, <laughs> what piece burning blood? One piece burning blood. That's it. One piece burning blood. That is the one. That is the one that we're going to give away, you know, in like four minutes. Um, Lucy and Damien and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, uh, I was gonna, I was, Grinny, I was gonna speak to you in a British accent. I'm sorry about that. I've got all these accents going on. You could just, you can forgive me for being a little bit like, whoa. Um, you should read it. It's not long. It's good. Isn't blood punch what Klingons drink? Ooh, Sal. Nice for the PDF. Um, I feel like blood punch is something that you would get over on Claudia's stream. Like when you join the cult, you might get a blood punch or a throat punch or a blood, a throat punch. I, did I take the punch or the sadness? I can't remember what my choices were when I joined. Klingons drink blood wine. I thought vampires drank blood wine. Oh, so, so mm. difficult. Mm. I know, son, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I see that you are struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. My English major powers are coming in useful. And that... Huh. English majors have the best powers. English majors have the best powers. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. Um, I am PDFs of literature, man! Um, I feel like... What if you had a vampire Klingon? Vampire Klingon. What would they drink? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Uh huh. I love you, son. Mm. Lucin continues staring out the window. Love you too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. Lots of blood wine, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Oh, you know, okay, so here's the thing. So Klingon vampires, do they get, like, gallons of blood wine? Garlic dressing. Mmm. Oh, so now I'm thinking... Some sort of, like, chicken dish with blood wine and garlic dressing. That'd be super tasty. But it might confuse the vampires. Hmm. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good. So, there's your silver lining. Mm. Garlic dressing. So good. There is that, yes. Um, he's probably just going through a phase 
I really admire how you handled that. Does this kind of thing happen a lot? I think, considering what he just said in the car, what I would say is I really admire how you handled that. Because he did seem to, Rex seemed to be, seemed to admire that. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Exactly. We're going to admire him. Krellen, exactly. Admiration. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what be what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. I've got all the hearts. I've got all of them. See you around soon. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. I come home to find a man come on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Can I just take the blood punch? I know, maybe... <sighs> so, okay. Now, I just want you all to know that now I'm thinking about blood punch, and what I'm thinking of is that blood punch is probably blood orange punch. Like, punch with a lot of blood orange juice in it. And if it was from Germany during Christmas time, there'd also be rum in it. And it would be warm and delicious. So now I want blood punch. I don't know how to make blood punch, but I want blood orange punch with rum warm. That would be really good. I mean, in the winter, it would have to be winter first because right now it's summer and it's hot, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yo, what you watching? Yeah. Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. I know, it sounds really good, right? I know. Mm. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you, I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. Cold blood punch also does sound delicious with ice. Ooh. I wonder if you could have, like, hibiscus in there, maybe? Like, some, like, blood orange, some hibiscus. Oh. I don't know how to make this punch, but now I want to make it. And I want it. But, honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. Cold blood dew. Get your... Cold blood dew! Get your blood echoes, man! Um, sounds so good. I'm not pooping outside, Greg! When do they just get a regular sized house? Huh? I. I don't know. Hmm. How'd afternoon tea go? Got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian, since he tried to. Oh. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with a promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? Grinny? Grinny, so here's the thing if you figure out how to make a really good blood punch, Share the recipe to the rest of us. I have not played Bud Bloodborne. I haven't. I should, but I haven't done it yet. But I will? I will? Yes? Oh, it's time. We're gonna go into the giveaway right now. Mm hmm? It's for Blood Punch. It's for a piece of cake and Blood Punch is the game that we are um, giving doing our giveaway for. How are you with controller snapping frustration? Ooh, um... Ooh, Gray, I'm so excited. Come up with the perfect blood punch, share it, and then we're gonna have, like, our... We will have an Atomic Foxhole beverage blood punch. So exciting. I'm so excited. I am so excited for this blood punch. I might be more excited than I should be, but I'm really excited. Um, I... I'm good with controller snapping frustration to a point, and then I'm like, what's up with that? It depends on, it depends, here's the thing. Ooh. Somebody's watching me, and I have no privacy. Oh, I always feel that. Somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Hello, Mizzy. Welcome in. Thank you so much for following. This is uh, the Academic Foxhole, and I am Trooper SJP, and all the good folks hanging out here are the Battle Buddies, and uh, we are playing Dream Dad, a daddy dating simulator, or also like relationship with your kid simulator, which is very awesome. And we're talking about um, 
we're talking about blood punch, which would be uh, blood oranges. I don't, but maybe you can get blood orange juice, although blood oranges themselves would be really good if you could put in it. Um, I wonder if this is like a sangria? Um, yeah, a grocery store. You should get them, be able to get them at a grocery store, Granny. I think that's true. Family, oh, Dark Souls. Oh. So, I think I like... I don't mind difficult games, but I don't like difficult games that are difficult in a cheap way. If you know what I mean. So, what I mean by that is... I was playing some game... And, you know, you're going, do, 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 and like, it wasn't an easy game, it wasn't a hard game, but you're, but you're, oh, all right, we will see you when you get back, Grinny. Um, but, you know, you're playing the game, it's fine, and then, like, at some point in time, I on like, Act 4, they just did this difficulty spike, like that. And I was like, well, that's dumb. So, like, I like it to make sense. I don't mind hard games, I just want it to make sense. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? I want it to feel, I want the difficulty to feel fair. Like, it can be really hard, but if I feel like it's a fair hardness, then I'm fine. If I feel like they just made it really hard just because, in a way that isn't, I don't know, doesn't really, isn't really fair for what the game is doing, then I get irritated. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. So, I'm gonna go and, um, call the winner. Blood Punch is a movie? Grinny! Grinny Weasley, you just won the Blood Punch! Haha! <laughs> uh, uh, congratulations on winning the, the One Piece Blood Punch. One, One Piece Burning Blood. Congratulations on our giveaway, One Piece Burning Blood. Which I'm going to send you, Grinny, I'm just send you a message right now. Whisper. So Grinny, right now I'm sending you the Humble Bundle code so you can use it on Steam. Let me know if you got it because I want to make sure you did. And then, Grinny. Yes, Grinny, you got it. It is for you. You have the, the one, the onesie, you have the onesie blood punch, uh, the one piece burning blood. So congratulations, woo. Um, okay, fine, but you've got, make sure that the, uh, Okay, you got the whisper, good. And make sure you don't lose the whisper, because I want you to... Oh, it'll, you, you have it on the whisper, so it stays there. Good. Congratulations. I'm so excited. I, it looks like our next week's uh, giveaway will be overcooked. And so that's exciting as well. And then, yeah. And then we've got... I don't know. We've got a couple more. We've got a couple more in there that we can do. Hmm. But how did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? Yeah. Lucian live streamed the entire thing. Oh, oh, well, this entire day is beyond me. So he's live streaming his uh, potential murder of Ernest. Interesting. It's fine. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a real character, but he's really good company and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. All right, be right back, Grinny. We will see you when you get here. We will hold the fort down <laughs> while you are away. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Hmm. All right. Date complete. We have a lot of points, it looks like. Wow. My stars, this... Never in a million moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one. Oh. I don't quite know what an S means, but I think it's good. Rank S is good. I don't know what these ranks are. I got a B in my last date, but I don't know what that means. Uh, kiss the faces and touch the butts. See you soon. Oh, kiss the faces and touch the butts. That's such a great, like, um, uh, you know what's like, kick ass and take names? Like, kiss faces and touch the butts? Like, that's really good. I like it. Hey, Trooper! Uh, no, I'm Trooper. Levi! <laughs> Sorry. I saw your Hey Trooper, and then I said Hey Trooper back, but I'm Trooper. You're Levi. Hey! Oh, superior. It's better than A. Oh. Levi, how are you doing? Welcome in. You just missed our giveaway for the onesie burning punch. It's actually one piece burning blood, but that's fine. Um, S is for special. It's an A++. C-B-A-S. Oh. Oh. I had a much better date with Damien than I did with um, Coffee Dad. I, oh. I, what does that mean? 
What does that mean for my Welcome. life? You've got dad. Oh, we get to go another. We get to do another date. Oh. Um. So I suppose we should do Hugo, right? Oh, it's a thing from Japanese games. Thanks, Sal. Nice. Nice. Um, I think we should go on a date with Hugo. Right? Because he's our third eligible dad that we should maybe go out on a date with. Right? Yes? I know, right? No, do not be ashamed of your nerdery. This is the Acme Foxhole, Sal, and it is all nerdery all the time. We bathe in nerdery, as if nerdery were like... silver beams of moonlight that bathe in us and, and make us glow with nerdtastic phantasmagoria. So many dads. Um, all right, we're going with you, though. Um, middle school teacher, high school teacher, Writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know, and I'm sorry. On a Friday night, you're most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. Miniature painting? That's great. Uh, if you had to take, if you had to take one thing uh, with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A uh, Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. What are your turn-ons? Muscles? What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, a movie star? What's your favorite movie genre? Documentaries on art history. What's your ideal date? Each of us reads a different book in opposite sides of the couch in comfortable silence. What you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forget them at home a lot. I spend a lot of time thinking about. I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. Uh, let me tell you about Gundam, Bonds of the Battlefield. I actually don't know the Japanese name because it's Japanese. I'm just using the translation. Uh, that's fair. Uh, let me tell you about watching space robots. Uh, space Giant, Ultraman. Like, when I was a kid, we had this show, Captain Cosmic, and he would show all those live-action uh, Japanese uh, kid shows from, like, the 60s, like... Uh, Johnny Sakoda's Flying Robot, Ultraman, uh, Space Giant, which I think was also called maybe Giant Robot, um, and there were like four of them. Johnny Sakoda's Flying Robot, Ultraman, Space Giant, and maybe one more? Anyway, old school. We're going to go on a date with, with Hugo, and we're going to see how it goes. I don't know. That's just, we're going to find out. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Gundam Bonds of the Battlefield is the Gundam arcade game where you send the cockpit pods. Ooh, ooh, I remember that video game. Um, I love arcade games, side note everyone. Also pinball. So I just, there you all, I want you to know it. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? I had an Ulramon figure with the tank that came apart to build his armor. Nice! Nice, Cher. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one uh, who remembers Ultraman. I wait a few moments, minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. I definitely want some to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I think about it for a, a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school, arguably the worst age to be. Which is true. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be honest with you here. It's the middle school class, and I need as much help as I can get. Yeah, but I'm glad other people remember Ultraman. So thank you all for making me feel like I'm not like the only... Because you know, the thing is... It was on our local, it was like, the Ultraman was being shown on one of our local channels in the Bay Area, and I just don't know if everybody got it, you know what I mean? And so sometimes, you just don't know if everybody else, I mean, nowadays it's different because we have cable and people all sort of see the same things, but when I was a kid we had, like, local channels, and I don't always know if everybody got the same things that 
I got. So it's nice to know I was not the only one. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, um, how was middle school for you? Ugh. Bad. But nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and ge generally, and being generally terrible. Some people liked middle school. I worry about who those people were, though. Aww. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness, just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division, and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Hmm. What was your middle school experience like? Ooh. Um, my district was elementary, uh, first through sixth grade, and high school. Oh! Levi, you didn't have middle school. You know what, though? That might have been not bad for you not to have middle school. Because, I don't know, middle school's the worst. So maybe it wasn't bad, right? So you, that could be okay. That, that could be all right. Levi, what state are you from? What's your home state? You don't have to tell us your exact location so we don't stalk you. But what is your home state? That's all I want to know. Um... I don't remember. I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. So first off, clearly, I thought it was fine is not Pennsylvania. Um, I mean, piloting the Dom. Yeah. Oh. I won't stalk you, I promise. Uh, um, Levi, where in Pennsylvania? Don't you... My dad... No, you don't have to tell me. I will tell you something so that you don't have to share things on the internet if you don't want to. Um... My dad was from Bristol, Pennsylvania, uh, so that is the thing of Pennsylvania that I know, that my dad was from uh, Bristol. Uh, it's like a smallish town. I'm pretty sure middle school was designed to stick all the hormones in one place and then break them up for high school. <laughs> that that might have actually been true. They're like, but also, because the thing is, middle school, you're 11, 12, and 13, right? And 11, 12, and 13 is kind of old for people who are... If you're looking at kids who are like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Elementary school, those are those kids are really young. But 11, 12, and 13 is pretty small if you're looking at kids who are uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. So like maybe they figure, oh, all right, that's fair. Um, I don't think that Rex thought it was fine. I think he was just going to say that I didn't like it. Oh, between Pittsburgh and Erie. Oh, there's a folk song about the Erie Canal, I think. Levi, there's a folk song about the Erie Canal that uh, this Canadian folk duo I know sings. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a it's a folk song, and I think they sing it um, a cappella, but it's like very interesting. Levi, are you like? I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on the, the Discord. That's what I'll do. I will. Well, actually, I don't know if it's available. I will look for it. I'm gonna write this down. I have to take notes when I when I stream with y'all because y'all are so interesting. Erie Canal for Levi. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna put it on there because if it's like near your home, then maybe that's interesting, right? And also, anybody who's hanging out lurking and doesn't know, oh really? We have we have a we have a Discord. So I'm gonna put this on there for you, and you can like tell me what you think about it. I think there are like it's interesting because it's got this real sort of like lonesome sort of feeling to it. It's, I think you'll like it. I think it, um, yeah. I mean, maybe you won't like it. I don't know. But I think it's quite, uh, arresting of a song. Like it, like it's, they do some really cool sort of like kind of dissonant, creepy harmonies that makes you be like, oh, what is this song about? So I will post it for you. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. What'd she do to you? I stare off into the middle distance, remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remember the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham, him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't like how Rex's first crush is a distinctly feminine name. No, I totally agree with you, Sal. I agree with you. It could, like, it could have been just Alex, right? Because Alex is gender neutral. Could be one way or the other. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna put it on there. If I if I can if it is on YouTube, I will put it on the Discord. If it is not on YouTube, then 
we will work it out. I don't want to talk about it. Huh. See? Middle schoolers are the are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. I just wanted to know what I was in for. Hmm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Hmm. The last field trip I got to go on was the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They give us square pizza. At a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? Ah. No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up, up into one of those vats of clam chowder. I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right. Let's leave that story film in the past. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. Oh, Rex. What are you worried? That a whale's going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. All right. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh the fear of the ocean. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss a man on the forehead before I head out. Yeah, Rex is super neurotic, right? Like, Rex is such an interesting character. Like, I try to, like, negotiate the various things we learn about him. It's quite odd. It's not easy. Um, you know why the... What in the world did I write? You know why the gardens... Why those gardens... You know why... Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just reading my handwriting, and it is questionable. Tears don't make burritos taste sad, just soggy. I got that one. You know why those gardens flower? Dead bodies make for good plant food. Okay. Sort of. Gardens. Those gardens flower. Yeah. I can't always read my handwriting. Um, I arrive at the aquarium to find the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Do you know why the gardens? No, I think it's, you, you know why those gardens flower. I think that was actually it, which is, yes. We're going to go with it. Uh. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo. Uh. It's been a debacle all morning. Debacle all morning. We're shorthanded, and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Oh. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Ah, yes. Yes. Flower's a verb there. You know why those gardens flower? Yes. Flower being the verb. Got it. Got it. Levi, you're on it. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups. So we're off to a good start. Um... Can you guys put your phones away? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo, then go back to texting. At least they're quiet? Um... Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school, after all. Hmm? We'll see. Ooh, what a nice aquarium. Also, there are manta ray up in that top center corner, and manta ray are a little bit scary. They murder people. It's a fact. Uh, um, I'm going to write this down. I've got to get my note. We have uh, all sorts of things today. The classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out a massive stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab these sheets from Hugo. What's the packet? Hey! 
Honestly, it's just busy work so the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions asked them to sit quietly for ten minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like it. <laughs> this is Sal. Well, maybe, maybe like us strands that poke at dangerous animals for fun. I don't know. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like interesting kids to the feudal perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Not since the Great Compromise of 2003. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhi exhibits as well. Come on. They have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to the large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Oh. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Hmm. Their spines are even venomous, too. Nature's hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Hey. That's a stonefish. The most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here. Oh, they're relatively harmless so long as you don't step on them. What what happens if you step on them? Hmm? Tissue necrosis. Cool. Oh. Nature is wild. Man, he guys seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to, to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Hmm. That one? Yeah, that's the, um, uh, hmm. Uh, oh, American Long Thin, Blue-Nosed Wigglyfish, Humphead Wrasse. Uh, we need a fish name, peoples. Are we the, are we, are we going for the American Long Thin, the Blue-Nosed Wigglyfish, or the Humphead Wrasse? Uh, I'm feeling one or two, Wigglyfish. See, I'm feeling Wigglyfish too. Levi, you were on my, oh, the Long Thin is a real one. Oh. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. But Wigglyfish is fun. Wigglyfish. Oh. Yeah. Did you know that? Um. Ooh. Uh. Okay. We have we have paranormal fish trivia, psychiatric fish trivia. Ooh. Somebody's watching me, and I have no privacy. Oh. I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Keys is seven. Thank you for the follow. Welcome into the Academic Foxhole. I'm Trooper SJP. It is nice to have you here. We are playing Dream Daddy, mm -mm -mm, the dating simulator. We're currently having a date with Hugo, the English teacher, or, or book dad, as we like to call them. Uh, they do, right? All of them seem really interesting. We're trying to figure out what kind of fish trivia to give him. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Sanders would have one fish. <laughs> I think, um, here's the thing. We know already that Rex really likes that paranormal trucker ghost hunting show, right? That he, that's his favorite show, the paranormal truck hunters. That's what it's called, right? Like the, you know what I mean, paranormal truck hunting. So, uh, Kami's was just a red herring. But boom, boom, uh, the jaws. We're gonna go with paranormal because of his, his love of the political trucker, ghost truckers, ghost trucker show. This fish uh, sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, is not an actual vampire. That's the vampire fish. David Hasselhoff defeated communism. Oh. Wait. Are you? Wait. Are you serious? Um, absolutely not, we're gonna say. I'm playing it for the gag here. Oh. Ah, good one. We lead the kids to another room. Uh, oh, Skeksy. 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 <clears throat> I don't know if I can still do this because it has been years. Years. But I will see if I can still do it. Ooh. Somebody's watching me, and I have no privacy. 
whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Blue Sky, 0530, welcome into the academic foxhole. Oh, Skeksy, you're so fun, you're so fun, you blow my mind. Hey, Skeksy, I know, let me see if I can remember it. I believe it goes something like, um, it was 20 years ago, it was 20 years ago this very night. It was the worst accident. It was the worst car accident I ever seen. And when they finally pulled the body out of the twisted, burning wreck, it looked like this. <laughs> yes, sir. That was the worst accident I ever seen. Uh, <laughs> um, so I don't get the like, only a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, so there you go. Like, I don't think I got all the words right because it, again, has been like well over a decade or two since I've seen that movie, but I think that was more or less it, more or less. Um, that's all. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive floor to ceiling aquarium. The kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. That whole movie was like... Uh, insert practical effects. We just need some, like, I really feel like it was claymation or something that was put in there. Uh, so, that movie, I gotta tell you, I loved, there are parts of that movie that I just thought were so great. I loved it when it was the, uh, uh, I know you are, but, like, no, okay, my favorite part, my favorite part of Pee-wee's Big Adventure was when they go to the Alamo, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was claymation. They go to the Alamo, and, uh, was it like Jan Hooks? Ooh. Somebody's watching me, and I have no privacy. Whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Anthony Dean, 153, welcome into the Academic Foxhole. We are playing Dream Dads. This is, uh, all the battle buddies are here. And, uh, at high noon, on the circuit of midnight, two de brothers stood to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot each other. If you don't believe this lie is true, ask the blind man. He saw it too. Oh. So my favorite part, my favorite part of Pee-wee's Big Adventure, I, I don't know why, but it was, was when they go to the Alamo, and there's like Jan Hooks, and uh, she's like, you know, this is the Alamo, and do you know what this is? It's maize. Um, also known as, like, it's, it's maize. And there are, like, 1,000 uses for maize, all of which I will tell you about right now. And, uh, and, like, that just was, like, that was hilarious to me. And then when he's, like, when are we going to see the basement? And she's, like, there's no basement. Everybody laughed. Like, I just loved that one moment. I, it made me happy. That's all. He then leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside inside of the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me, notice me staring. Wow! Mm. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? Ooh, I'd rather stare at you. We can learn a great deal from the Mother Ocean. Are those two sharks kissing? So we're not gonna go with the flirt because I'm not feeling it. Like, I'm just not feeling the flirt right now. Um, I don't know why I'm not feeling the flirt right now, but I'm not feeling the flirt right now. Maybe it might've been his profile. I don't know. But I feel like we should, we can learn a great deal from the Mother Ocean. That's, I think, what we should say. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It is truly fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. That's a very astute point, Rex. Uh, I know, not subtle. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. Strong eggplant reaction. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Because I'm neurotic, and Sal called it just earlier. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Rex? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from... from a respectable distance. Oh, come 
on. It'll be fun and informative. Don't think, don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. Um, that's a really good question. How did the eggplant become internet for dicks? I think it's because people just want dicks, and so then there's go they're gonna have one. Like, if there were no eggplant, it would be something else. I don't know what, but it would be something. I don't know that any of those things, what there's, uh, again, Jerry's correct, how couldn't it? I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me in my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank. Slowly dipping my hand into the cold water, I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. The internet wants dick. <laughs> I mean, these things are true, right? I mean, what am I supposed to... I, I'm not going to lie to you. That's all. Uh, I know you'd think the banana would be a classic choice. You'd think that. Things get a lot less scary when you learn about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo as we reach for the same anemone. Anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away some time. Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Uh-oh. Why's that? Oh. Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Susan? Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after the middle schooler and catches before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. Um... <laughs> Uh, we don't have time for games here. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. I'm not afraid to hit a child. Not the last one. Uh, it is a terrible scale. You can have all sorts of size bananas. Also, you can have all sorts of size eggplants as well. Hmm. Um, it's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. I don't have time for We're gonna go with it's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink, because that's sort of funny. I had a bud go down for that once. He came out a changed man. Said he missed the bars. Invents really tiny credit cards. Levi's on it. Like, you're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Hmm. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping a book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Huh? Hugo leans down and unzips a backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan. What was your plan? I was, like, trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was going to die? Eh. Hugo, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah. And, and your hands where we can see them. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. Oh. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surrounds oh. us. Look over here. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Hmm. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? I, I think that I think that Levi's gonna become a, a multi-billionaire just based on tiny credit cards. That's it. He doesn't need to win the lottery. Tiny credit cards. That's the way. Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on the phones. Oh. Fun fact: male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. <laughs> it's super cranky. Man, I thought we had it hard. Oh. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years, too. All however many thousand of them. 
You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Ah! It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as, I, as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand. Uh, every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Oh yeah, business card CDs. I remember them too. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. <laughs> we'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Fight me! Fight me! Uh, Hugo, Hugo's, Hugo's, Hugo's a really good dad. He's a great dad. Do we get to see the penguins? Oh. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Ooh, penguins. Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. Uh, like the label and the stuff, not the tech. Mm. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Huh? Hugo suddenly grabs my arm! Oh my god! There's a student in the penguin enclosure! Uh-oh. Wait, just kidding! It's very bad! Is it one of ours? Uh... It most certainly is! It's Molly Henderson, Susan's friend! I look over to the penguins and see a determined-looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. My favorite business card is still the security expert whose business cards were also lockpicks. No, that's... that's... that's badass. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We've got to stop it before the staff sees and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. Eh. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Eh. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. Hey, to Huds, how are you doing? A lawyer from my head that says mercenary and problem solver. To Huds, we are on our date with Hugo, book dad, and, uh... Yeah, it was when the internet wasn't quite there to have a website portfolio. A lot of artists used to show off their digital work. Yeah, business cards used to be so cool. I suppose you can still get cool business cards. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you're dropping by before bed. We're only going to be on for like another 20 or so minutes till we finish this date. It's How are you doing, Tuds? I haven't been around last week because of Gen Con, so I missed everybody. So it's good to see you. And I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry that like school is full of poopy heads. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry that school is full of poopy heads for you. Oh, Sal, you have a great roommate, clearly. That's awesome. Is Ambrosia as good as the blood punch that Grinny is going to make? That's the question we need to know. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Uh, um, hmm. here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. Nothing beats Blood Punch. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Ah. Uh. uh, contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. Yeah, business cards are still big, especially for freelancers, but they just have the website URL, no need for the CDs anymore. Uh, thanks for the support, I just got to sacrifice my last sort of dignity on the altar of not dealing with bullshit. Sometimes you've got to sell out bull bills to pay, etc. I just hope that you have other moments of joy, maybe hanging out with us so that it makes up for the badness. Oh, you're a teacher to HUDs. We learned a lot of things today. We learned that tears don't make burritos taste sad, just soggy. We learned that today. We also learned that you know why gardens flower? Because dead bodies make for good plant fertilizer. We learned a lot of things, actually. It's just a good times. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the uh, birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're going to live in my closet. Uh, wrong voice. Like, they're going to live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We've got to get out of here. <laughs> they are some needy bulls. 
Those are good things to know. Lots of nitrogen and phosphorus in the human body, right? These are good things to know. Uh, also, we also learned that uh, manta ray are kind of scary. They murder people. It's a fact. Uh, those are, that's also, also a thing. Not until, like, I save a penguin. Eh. Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions. So they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Um, uh, did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. It's a protection, it's a protection fee for a china shop. <laughs> That's good. I'm running out of time. Um, we're, we're gonna just bribe her. We're gonna bribe her. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well like, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well I have $12 and some change. Also there's a button here. Is that enough? Um. Hello! I'm here looking for cuddle steak naps. Cuddle steak naps. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Argentinian penguins. Yes. I want to know what a steak nap is. Is it like a steak knife, but instead of cutting things, you you sleep? Pay me the other late eight later and we have a deal. We moved to shake an arrangement before I suddenly realized there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're going to have to block these birds. I feel like this is a mini game. They live at the beach. Block that bird. Block the bird. Okay. No. 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 No penguins. Okay, well, alright, here we go. No penguins. Oh! Okay, I've got hands. I get to shoot hands out. Alright. We're going- I- I lost a penguin. I think I lost one. But now I know how the minigame goes. Um. I- uh, I- I- Okay, so one bribe penguin got- team. Bribe the teen? Oh, I just bribed a teen. I think we're good, right? Uh, how many penguins escaped? Only one! Only one penguin escaped. Is that- is that good? I think- I think I- uh, Oh! It's energy! How are you doing? Uh, you've been working a 14 hour shift so you can't- 14 hour shift? It's energy! What have you been doing? What do you do that they put you on a 14 hour shift? I hope it was a 14 hour shift that was like... Not, like, miserable. Uh, that's what, look what I have done. Oh, uh, so, um, it's energy. I hope, I hope you're, I hope you're okay. Oh, uh, ooh, to Huds. Everybody, I said, let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name, you treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F or an M will appear. And then you say Bo at a B, then you say the name, then banana, fana, and fo. And then you say the name again with an F, very plain, then a fee, fi, and a mo. And then you say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. To huds, to huds, to huds, boba huds, banana fana fo for huds, fi fa mo ma huds, to huds. Um, uh, thank you for the subscription to huds. I hope you enjoyed your name game. Ooh. And I have no privacy. Oh, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Welcome in, Tatoria. Welcome into the Atomic Foxhole. Uh, there's a lot of singing that happens here. Is <laughs> is clearly what happens in the foxhole. Um, uh, I got it though. See, Grinny, I got to Huds. The tricky thing about with to Huds is that the accents on the second syllable, which makes it a little bit tricky. But I got it. I got it. Thank you so much for the subscription to Huds. That was amazing. Welcome. Thank you so much. You are now a graduate corporal, and I certainly hope that you enjoyed your name game. Um, I don't know. I, you know, it's fine. Maybe you just wanted to wait for the right moment to get your name game song. That's entirely possible. Um, the company you work for is contracted by a 
bear by school district. We fixed text issues. It's just been, it's been cool, just long. Still got some time to go. Oh, good, good, good. Bear school districts sound more interesting. Near. I, I actually, I also like the idea of a bear school district. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like, um, I'm so glad that you liked it, Tahuds. Also, I want to see a school district full of just bears, like grizzly bears, black bears, polar bears, and like you coming in to fix tech issues, uh, tech issues, and they're just these bears looming, and you're like, I'm just here to fix the, and they're these bears. Like I, I can see it, I can see it. Um, <laughs> that's all. That's all. Um, whew, I'm glad that's over. Just in time too. Looks like Hugo's wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Ah. Oh, no, no, that's... Okay, now... All right, now to Huds. Now you've got me imagining all these, like, middle schoolers wearing leather caps and being, like, not actually hairy because they're not hairy yet because they're kids, but, like, wearing, like, leather chaps and jeans and, like, leather motorcycle jackets. Just a whole room full of little proto-bears. Um, <laughs> uh, sounds bad. I read it at fourth grade level, but in bear grades, I'm a postgraduate. Is that a Catholic prep? I'm just telling you, there's all sorts of things going on there. All the bears, all the time. And I, I think that's why uh, penguins, or bears, are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots them across the way and runs over. <sighs> Molly, what were you doing in there? I was, like, liberating the animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Speaking of bears, my dog bear is trying to break my leg. No! No to the dog bear. No breaking legs. No. I, tell the dog bear I disapprove. Well, um, like, it was a thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight bucks. What? What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose they can pet animal thief notes. Ah. Uh... Bears are pretty well read as far as the animal kingdom is concerned. I could see it. I imagine, I, oh, I'm imagining now that hibernation for bears is like going into a cave with like a nice warm blanket, some hot chocolate, and a book for like a couple of months. And all they do is they just read. That's, that's what they do. I want to do that, but summer is almost over. Mm. You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Rex, did you just bribe a child? Um, I bribed a child. I didn't know what she was talking about. You can't play with the rules when there are penguins on the line. Uh, see? Skexy knows what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to just go with you can't play by the rules when there's penguins on the line because I feel like that's funny. Listen, man. We've all done dark things in our lives. I'm not the young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe children to save a penguin. The me today knows different. I only wish I could go back. <laughs> Hmm? Tell them the truth in a sort of a funny way, right? Let's just get through the day and get out of here. Oh, I don't think you like that. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered, is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load out of the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Hey! Hey, Rex, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Ah! Let me take you out next time to make it up for you. Like, you like cheese boards? Oh, um, first off, who doesn't like cheese? Cheese all the time. Uh, there's nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board, because we need cheese. Watched the first two episodes of, At of Atypical last night. The main character has a thing for... I don't think I know Atypical. I know, right? You, you know, bribe a child. Oh, I also got, uh, eggplants. Great! Well, I gotta make sure the kids don't see anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Uh, sorry, wrong voice. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Ugh. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. Ha! You got to go into the penguin enclosure? Uh, Grinny, um, <laughs> I'm going to work this out with the with the thing. It's on my list for regulars and emotes and capitals. I want you to know it. It's a new Netflix show about a high school kid on the spectrum 
who has decided to get laid. Oh, is it good Skeksy or is it like not good? Is it good? Is it understanding? Is it sensitive or is it exploitative? Listen, Night, but let me live my life. Let me live my life. Um, see, like that was like, that was good. Let Grinny live. It's good. Oh, good. I don't yet have Netflix because my TiVo is still full of things that I have to get off. But once I get my TiVo cleared, I'm getting Netflix so I can watch all the stuff. Um, oh, good, good. You got to go to the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. Uh, <laughs> we have to, like, watch out for Nightbutt, because Nightbutt is, like, super sassy. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. Ah. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? Hey. Wrong voice for her, sorry. Kind of a stick in the mud? He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. All right. Too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna rest my eyes. Oh. You mean take a nap? Uh... <laughs> Typing gives, not lives. You know what? The typing is... Here's the thing. I've decided that the internet has become sentient and it makes us... It forces us into typos. Like, we type, we actually type the right thing, but then it switches it up so it looks like we made a typo so that people judge us, but it wasn't us. It was the internet. It was Skynet. Skynet is real, and all Skynet wants to do is not really create Terminators, but make us look like we're bad spellers. That's the truth. Ooh, crew pizza. Ooh, pizza. I'm hungry. Mmm. Do I want pizza? Ooh. It's energy. Oh, you're making me think about pizza now. There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. And I was trying to use Alexa for everything. Okay. Uh, Hemingway, Calm Water, Touch Tank, Dad Nap. Hey! That was so good, you gave me goosebumps. I got an S with Hugo. What? No way. Welcome. You've got dads. Okay, that was great. So here's the thing, folks. Here, wait, let's save. Save. We have to save. And then I feel like we should have a little bit of a conversation. I love Chris Hardwick. Don't ask why I'm commenting on commenting on him. You can talk about Chris Hardwick. Killing these dates, right? I didn't have the greatest date with Matt. Uh, because I totally failed that mini mini game. Like, like it wasn't even funny. It was bad. But he was he was very charming. So here's the thing. It is like basically almost nine o'clock. So we should go and end. But here, hold on a second. Let's let's hang out in bigger. Oh, he's on your TV. Here, let's do this. Ooh. Hey, everybody. So. I feel like we should have a, like a really brief question, like a, a brief conversation, all of us together. Um, I like Chris Hardwick's um, At Midnight. That makes me laugh when he's got good guests. Then I laugh at midnight. I like that. Um, so we've been on three dad dates and I don't know if we should go on other dad dates or if we should date the people we've already dated a second time because I don't know. So here's the thing I don't know. In some dating sims, if you try to date everybody, then you can never get a really great ending with anyone because you've not spent enough time with all of them. Um, oh, he hosts the wall. What's the wall? What's the wall? I don't know what it is. So, next time when we start our next session of Dream Dad, should we go on a date with Damien again? Should, should we do that? Should we... Should we date Matt again to see if we can get a better date? What do we do, everyone? I don't know. I don't want to date Joseph because I feel like he's going to murder me. I don't know. So so basically, we have got lots of... Um, we've got a conundrum is what we've got to do. And I don't know the answer to it. But we're going to find out next Thursday. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. And like being... like It's a game show. Oh, Oh, that's cool. I should see it sometime. Yeah, I think we should go on a second date with Damien and see how that goes. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it next Thursday. On Saturday, um, I'm playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, some more of that. Uh, we are going to... Oh. 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna play some Dragon Age Inquisition on Saturday, noon Eastern time. Uh, and, uh, oh, and I'm, since I'm gonna be playing, running probably some games, GMing some games at Gen Con next year, I'm gonna have to run not my GURPS Arena, which I've been putting together, but some Clockwork Dominion, I think, to get some practice in. So that is what uh, we'll be doing sometime, some tabletop sometime soon. Um, after I get after I get my syllabi written, my grad director of graduate studies stuff done, uh, and my laundry done, but that's not a big deal, and uh, fellowship applications done. So I've got to do those and. Uh, a paper written. Once I do those four things, we're good. I don't work two jobs anymore, so I'll definitely be able to watch. Oh, good. Oh, good. It's energy. I'm so. First off, it's good that you're not running, uh, working two jobs anymore. That's hectic and stressful. And I hope the job that you're working right now is is good. I mean, sure, you do have bears running around when you're doing tech issues, and bears can be dangerous. But as long as as long as you're safe, I think it's good. So I will see you then. I feel like we're coming into the end of. Dragon Age Inquisition, right? Like, we only have two zones left, maybe? Maybe two? I think the Emerald Graves and the and the Exalted Plains are the only two zones. Like, we finished the... We finished the Dark Bear Mace works on kids, too! <laughs> so it all, it all works fine. Um, we've got to... I think we've got to go into the Dark Roads and finish up, like, a little things in the Dark Roads, which I think won't take us very long. Uh, and the deep roads, and then uh, we've got two zones, one more piece of uh, one more piece of um, DLC, the Jaws of Hakon, I think, and then big big deal. Ooh, Emerald Graves. Oh, nice. All right, so we'll 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 go to the Emerald Graves. So we will finish up the last like the little like we finished the um, deep roads, but we have to like get those last bits of things we unlocked. Check them out. Uh, we'll do that, and then we will. Go to the Emerald Graves, I think. I think that'll be great. And then we have to talk to everybody. So that's that's gonna be our life. So everyone, let's see who is currently online that we could do a quick raid for and uh, say hi to. Oh, my fellow channels. Hmm. There are not a lot of people online right now that we know, but there is Smashly that we could say hi to who's doing some sort of like what is this warframe warframe it's playing warframe uh i know right it's like another six months i just hope that like I i'm gonna think that it's not gonna be another six months like we have spent we've spent a lot of hours together playing dragon age Inquisition, and once we're done with it we're gonna play everybody's gone to rapture which i have on on the ps4 and then probably i don't know something that is maybe maybe I've got some ideas. We've got Uncharted we can do. We've got um, Heavy Rain that we can do. So we've got some stuff that will be shorter. Shorter. But let's, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I think that we should go and give a quick raid over to Smashly. And um, our raid command is, see, I put it down here. Raid. Our raid command is, Ceci n'est pas un raid, or this is not a raid. Um, Life is Strange is actually on that list as well because I have Life is Strange on my PS4. So we'll probably do, we'll probably do Welcome to Rapture and then Life is Strange on the PS4 before we do one of the longer ones. So because I, I, I want to do it, so I'm excited. So um, and also the internet Skynet forced that to be a typo against our will. Um, so I want to thank everyone for being here. I'm Trooper SJP. This is the Academic Foxhole. We have a Discord. Um, if you've not followed, give us a follow. Join our Discord. Hang out with us. Talk with us. Uh, have a great time. Uh, we're going to do like a, a little bit of a raid on Smashly to say hi. And then um, that'll be it. I'm going to order some food. And I want to thank you all for being here with me. So let's... I'm going to host... I'm going to host Smashly. Host Smashly. Smashly. I'm gonna host and then we're gonna say hey. Uh, so thanks everybody for being here and I will see you on Saturday. If not Saturday, I will see you on Thursday. And if not those places, I'll see you on the discords. Thanks everybody. Have a good evening. And you know, remember, um, man to race kill people. It's a fact. <laughs>
<laughs> they murder people. Uh, take care, everybody.